Hey guys, my name is Stu and welcome to another one of my videos. And today we're jumping back into the MG4 and conducting a 60 miles per hour motorway range test. So let's kick things off by going through the route we're taking today. So today's route takes us from Gloucestershire and we head down the southwest corridor past Bristol and Avonmouth and then down into Somerset towards Taunton, which will be our turnaround point for today's test. So I'm just literally just topping up the battery before we leave. The cabin is at the right temperature. We just dropped to 99%. So I'm just going to try and get that back to 100% to make sure we're starting from scratch. So before we get away, let's go through the setup of the vehicle. Let's start with our driving setup first. So we're going to go to custom. Um, we got eco mode for horsepower, sport mode for steering, pedal force. We're going to put that to sport energy recovery is currently on high i would have this on low for motorways but if you do activate energy saving mode it won't let you select a lower energy recovery which is all part of the energy saving mode um, let's go to mg pilot we've got obviously uh, cruise control and uh, adaptive cruise selected lane assistance uh, we're going to switch off uh, traffic sign recognition is on, but I'm also going to switch that off because we get a lot of jumping animations on the driver's binnacle. Uh, front collision is on, that's all fine, and steady driving is on as well. Uh, the rest of everything else is just my personal preferences. So we're all ready to go, we're just going to wait for that last percent to come through, and then we shall get under away. So we're now at 100%, so we're going to unplug the car, and then we are going to get going. Okay, that's ready to rock and roll. Bit of a cold one this morning at 5 degrees Celsius. Now I have had the battery heating on, which started at 7 o'clock this morning. So top speeds today will be 60, unless for safety reasons I need to overtake a vehicle. Now a few people have mentioned about GPS speed. Now I do measure the GPS speed in the background and you'll be pleased to know that the MG4 is absolutely spot on with the GPS speed. So what you see on the binnacle is a true representation of the GPS speed as well. So as you can see, the surfaces are a little bit damp this morning, but hopefully once we get onto the motorway, they will be a little bit drier and conditions will fare better. Temperature's now gone up to six degrees. So it's getting warmer as that sun comes up. Now today's range tests came around from a bit of both my personal interest and also a lot of feedback I've had through many of my videos, mainly the 70 miles per hour test. And a lot of people were asking, would you do a 60 mile an hour test? Would you do a 65 miles per hour test? And I've always had the intention to do more than one speed anyway, because I think it's really, really important as we make a transition into EVs. And this may be of interest, not just to people who are jumping into EVs, but to also people who have been driving for years, but we've all been used to driving at 70 on a motorway or 60 on a A road. And we just want to know what's the efficiency difference in your EV? with a five or 10 miles per hour difference? Is that the difference of not having to stop to get home? Is it a case of, you know, I can go a little bit further now because I'm gonna do 60. Knowledge is power. If you know what your car's capable of or what you might be able to push the car to, or it's always just good to know what the worst case scenario is. If you just need to go a little bit further and you don't wanna stop, then you can just eke out that extra miles by dropping 10 miles per hour or five miles per hour. Now I chose 60 miles per hour because I felt that dropping by five miles per hour isn't, an, isn't a significant jump enough. It, it's either, in my eyes, it's either 60 or 70. And you know you can work out 65 miles per hour, the efficiency from that, generally from the figures which we can generate from today and the 70 miles per hour video. So we're at 60, let's lock that in. And we are set. 
So today's route, we are doing the infamous range route, which I've started, which you may have seen recently with the ID3. That route is to head down the Southwest Corridor through Gloucestershire, through Bristol and Avonmouth, and then into Somerset. It's a great road. We've got lots of different levels of elevation, lots of long hills, steep drops. Right, so now we're on the motorway. The car has now started to show incremental increases in the efficiency. We're at 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour now. Let's just very quickly go to the heating settings for today. So in all my range tests now, we always have the temperature at 22 degrees and a fan speed of one. This is more than uh, comfortable for me, for the vehicle. Now, as you can see, we've we've dropped from 100% to 96% already. And we've only been traveling for seven minutes. That's quite a drop, but it's not the end of the world. The top end of the battery, you don't see much energy in it anyway. It does drop very quickly. And then when you get into the meat of the pack, I guess, that's where the we'll grind out all the efficiencies. Now, I'll tell you what I am going to do. I am just going to jump into the options for a second. And we are going into driving. Uh, sorry, MG Pilot. And we are going to select TJA, which is Traffic Jam Assist. Now, you'll see on the screen here that it's going to measure the, car, the distance from the car in front. And on the binnacle here, you can see that the existing cruise control adaptive cruise is still illuminated we've also got this steering wheel function here and that green steering wheel means that the car is currently controlling the vehicle in terms of where its position is on the road when the car has control it's green when it doesn't have control it, it loses its illumination just to give you a, and it's always constantly making sure that you're holding on to the wheel the whole time. Now what I can show you is if I move the car to take over, you can see how it goes white and we introduce dotted lines down the side of the road. Now the dotted lines in this case will be the right hand side because that's an empty lane. And because it's safe to do so, I'm going to move over to this lane and then I'm going to move back. You can see we've got dotted lines on each side because we've got lanes available each side. Now we've only got a lane available here. We're now in the center of the lane and the car has now captured its position in the road and it's holding that. Now, although I don't, I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of lane assist, when you do have it on traffic jam assist, it seems to do a really good job of holding the car in the lane when you're on the motorway and you're not entertaining sharp turns or anything controversial which is gonna put it under a lot of stress. So we're 10 minutes into the journey now. Let's have a look at the details on the binnacle. So we're up to 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. We've done 7.8 miles. And if we head over to our energy consumption, currently we've used one kilowatt hour of energy for air conditioning and other consumables. And we've used two kilowatt hours so far of for driving. Even though this isn't a very tight turn, it's, it is a gradual bend and the lane assist seems to be dealing with that really well. It's not fidgeting like it, like I've known it to have done. So first trip updates, we're at 90% of the battery. We've got 140 miles remaining on the GOM. We've done 14.8 miles and we're up to 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Temperature is back, is, temperature has fallen to five degrees Celsius. So it has got a lot, a lot colder. Energy consumption is a total of five kilowatt hours. It is a very odd sensation when everyone seems to be going flying past you. I'm normally the one doing the flying past. Um, but this car's so comfy, 
quite happily sit here all day and do this. It's uh, it's a great motorway mile muncher and it's dead comfortable in here. So we're just going to chill out and enjoy the journey. I'm going to be navigating our second overtake just up ahead as this lorry's merged into the slow lane from the hard shoulder and as I indicate left we get the dotted lines either side because we've got a free lane each side we're going left into the slow lane we've got a solid line this side now because we know that that's the hard shoulder dotted line on the right and that's going to there we go we engaged the lane assist <laughs> IX there. Don't see too many of those around. So we've navigated to the 30 mile mark now. We are averaging 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Nearly at 80% battery. Just above that at the moment. And 128 miles left on the gun. It remains 7 degrees Celsius outside. Now one thing I have noticed is when you do have the cruise control activated, when you are going downhill like we just were then, it is a little bit juddery when it's adjusting the speed to stop the vehicle from over speeding. So rather than a, a, a very, very, very incremental bit of braking, it's, it's a little bit juddery, but that's fine. That's fine. Right, so we've hit the 80% battery mark. So one fifth of the battery. So we've currently used, just literally just changed to 10 kilowatt hours of energy used. We've got 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour on the GOM, 127 miles remaining. We've traveled 32.4 miles been traveling for 36 minutes so we are going up a bit of a gradient now so I'm interested to see what that does to the average efficiency it has just dropped down to 3.1 now okay so we hit milestone mark which is 40 miles we're averaging 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour Sitting nicely at 60. Road's drying up now. We've got 76% left on the battery and 121 miles of range on the GOM. We've used a total of 12 kilowatt hours for today's journey, including air conditioning consumables. Now we changed to 75% on the battery. So that's our first major milestone. definitely one thing I'd like to reiterate which I've, I've mentioned many times before and having um, having driven a few electric vehicles recently um, I've got to say how good the sound insulation is on this car as we pass this truck if you can listen out on the mic I hope it does it justice there's barely any noise at all Temperatures drop back down to four degrees Celsius. So we're now at the 60% marker on the battery, 100 miles remaining on the GOM. We've traveled 64.8 miles in total at one hour and nine minutes. Our current efficiency is 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So we've used 19 kilowatt hours in total for the journey. This, this cl long climb is plateauing now, and we do have a little bit of a dip afterwards, so that'll just help the efficiencies balance that out a bit better. 
So for the first time on the journey, I shall switch off the cruise control. So we're at the halfway point of the proposed route we take for the test. We are currently at 58% battery, 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour, 97 miles remaining. The car has done 69.1 miles. up to 60 miles per hour. There we go, and we're going to lock that in. And that's us set now for the route back. So just quickly, let's go over the current stats for the journey. At the halfway point, we are at 69.9 miles. 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour, 96 miles remaining on the GOM, 57% battery. It's now three degrees outside, so temperature has gone down. It's reduced, so that will affect efficiencies. Not by a terrible amount, but it will affect it. We are currently at 20 kilowatts of power used for the journey. That's 18 for driving and two for the air conditioning and other consumables. Average speed for the journey is 55 miles per hour, which is as close as we're gonna to get to 60 in total because of the turnaround points and the start and finish of the test. Close now to the 50% mark on the battery. We've traveled so far 81 miles in total. We have 89 miles left on the GOM. We've been traveling for an, just under an hour and 30 minutes. We've used in total 23 kilowatt hours of energy. 21 for driving, two for the air conditioning. Temperature's up to seven degrees now, which is great. That should help our efficiencies. And in terms of our efficiencies, we are currently at 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour, which I don't think is bad at all. Clearly at a stretch of road at the moment where there's very little wind because there's no wind noise outside whatsoever. It's eerily quiet, like pin drop moment. Well, it wasn't until we just hit this rough concrete surface. Now back on the tarmac, we're good. So, so, so quiet. So if you have a if you have a very young child or a baby who likes to sleep in the car, then I can't recommend this car enough because it is very, very quiet in this cabin. Even on the concrete road at the moment, the concrete surface. Remember the temperature's been very low today. We've been hovering around four and four and five degrees Celsius. The motorways are dried out now, but they were wet this morning. So if we could hit around between 160, 170 miles, I think that's quite good. So we've now hit 40% battery. 71 miles remaining we've completed nearly 100 miles we're about to tick over 100 miles we're traveling for an hour and 46 minutes seven degrees celsius outside we've used a total of 28 kilowatt hours of energy for the journey and we're averaging 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour
So we're now at the 30% battery mark. We've got 52 miles remaining on the GOM. We've traveled nearly 115 now. And there you go, 115 miles. And we're averaging 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. We've been on the road for just over two hours. Total consumption, we're at 32 kilowatt hours. Two kilowatt hours for air conditioning and accessories and 30 for driving. So the vehicle is showing 50 miles remaining on the GOM at 28%. That's actually good efficiency if that's accurate, but we'll see just how accurate that is at the end of the test. You're approaching 120 miles completed. A little over two hours, nearly two hours and five minutes. Three and a half miles per kilowatt hour on the efficiency. We've used 33 kilowatt hours in total for the car, 31 for the driving, two for air conditioning and other consumables. So we've been traveling now for two hours and 10 minutes. I've just had my first warning to warn me to stop for a break, which is blinking in the corner there. Now we've done a total of 123 miles in total. 25% of the battery remaining and 45 miles left on the GOM. 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour our average consumption. Now my bladder is winning, so I am going to hop into the services just quickly here on route to sort myself out and hopefully it reset that warning figure we got. So let's get on the road again. We Obviously because we have jumped in and out of the car, we're gonna have to reset the driving because it will not remember our settings. So lane assistance off, traffic sign recognition off. That's all fine. Driving, we are in eco, sorry, custom mode. Eco driving, pedal for sport, and MG saving mode activated. Right, that's us ready to go. Let's power on. So trip report update. We are now at 20% remaining battery, 37 miles left on the GOM, 131.7 miles completed at 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. And if we go to our charging screen and energy consumption, we've got 36 kilowatt hours in total of energy used. So there's our 10% on the journey. 10% battery remaining, 19 miles left on the GOM. 150 miles traveled. 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Total time so far, two hours and 42 minutes. Outdoor temperature is eight degrees centigrade. All right, so we're rejoining the motorway. Let's get that 60 mile an hour, 60 miles per hour speed locked back in. 
there we go. And then we'll get around this truck and continue this efficiency test. So we continue to head south as we look towards the next turnaround point. We are down to 7% battery, no warnings about low battery yet. Currently use 42 kilowatt hours for the journey. We're at 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour and we covered nearly 156 miles. There's 13 miles left on the GOM. So there's our first warning, it is still 7%, so technically it's not incorrect, but there's our first warning, 12 miles remaining. So we're turning around at this point and jumping back onto the motorway at 60 miles per hour. So we'll get back to 60 and lock in that speed. There we go. And rejoin. Down to 6% battery now. 11 miles of range remaining. So we're coming off here and we're going to head back to the starting point now. I'm going to try my best to remain at 60 for hour as we do have some A roads to tackle. Now, bizarrely, I haven't felt any reduction of power just yet, but the car is in eco mode, so it has does have restricted power anyway. Um, but not to a degree that I'm really noticing it. The car seems very happy to go back up to 60 again, effortlessly. So this is our last stretch of 60 miles per hour driving. It's got 3% left on the battery and six miles. still no reduction in power it's still there which is why I think there's definitely more miles left beyond zero percent right and there we go that's the end of the trip so until we did 164.7 miles we have five miles le remaining left on the GOM and 3% battery. So right, we've used 45 kilowatt hours of energy in total, which suggests there's five remaining. Of course, the remaining five miles is part of this, but that does suggest that there is some more miles available. Of course, this could be a discrepancy, but we will never be 100% sure. However, I do believe as we went into the afternoon and the temperatures started to climb, and the battery being warmer, this really helped the efficiencies on the vehicle. And there may be a very slim chance that this is where the discrepancy is and the car isn't quite matching the data. And speaking of data, I now present to you on the screen the two tests we've done so far with the MG4 on the motorway. And as predicted, the 60 miles per hour speed test did present better efficiencies and the car did go a little bit further. But bear in mind on the 70 miles per hour test, we had no HVAC running and the conditions were more favorable. So let's compare the figures and to make it a little bit more fairer, let's add the two kilowatts of HVAC to the 70 miles per hour test. And that would give us roughly around 154 miles for 100% battery, making the 60 miles per hour test around 9% more efficient. And then if we take into account the difference in temperatures, if the 60 miles per hour test was done at 11 to 15 degrees C, I'm going to guess roughly it's gonna be around 15% more efficient than the 70 miles per hour test. And lastly, I just wanted to bring your attention to one more thing, which is the two drivers binnacle displays you have in front of you. And this is just a small 
demonstration of how the vehicle guesstimates your range based on your recent driving. And on the left hand side we can see the binnacle from before today's test. And finally on the right hand side the charging screen after the test later on that day and you can see that the car is guesstimating a lot more miles based on the fact that I was driving 60 miles per hour all day. So just one to keep note of when you're looking at your range and you might be suspecting it's not quite as much as you thought or even more than you thought. And so my final conclusion from today's test, whether it's 60 mile an hour or 70 miles per hour, the MG4 handles incredibly well. You can certainly see at the bottom end of the colder conditions this LFP pack does struggle a little bit but clearly made vast improvement as the temperatures got warmer. But on the whole I thought it did really really well and for the time of year and also the road conditions I thought it really returned very good efficiencies. And if we take the discrepancy into account if we could turn that into extra distance we're talking about close to 180 miles for winter range here which would be incredibly attractive for a 50 kilowatt hour pack but we shall do the same test again when the climates are warmer and then we can make a comparison with the two and i think that will give us a really good indication of both winter and summer mileage for this car anyway that's it for this video thanks for tuning in thanks for supporting the channel and if you do enjoy the content please do like and subscribe stay safe and i'll see you in the next one